To produce a consistent income, a trader has to be able to execute their trades without making any errors or mistakes. In other words, trading without hesitation, reservation, or internal conflict. All of the errors we are susceptible to are a result of a lack of confidence, or more specifically, trading with fear. Welcome to the first ever interactive trading course on YouTube presented by Technical Gods FX. This course will help you grow your trading skill at an accelerated pace in just three easy steps. Number one, watch the video lesson and make sure to take good notes. Number two, pause the video when the lesson is over and take the interactive quiz. We want to incentivize you to learn. So if you score 100% on your first try of this week's lesson, you'll automatically be entered into this week's giveaway. Number three, Play the rest of the video lesson to get answers to the quiz instantly. In this video, we'll be building on top of the previous lesson on liquidity. So if you haven't watched it already, I highly suggest you starting there. In this video, we'll be breaking down this price action on the screen using M15 liquidity to find our M1 entries. So in order for us to break down this price action, we first have to understand where we came from. So we're going to be looking at New York session of the previous day. So as we can see here, we had a three candlestick pullback, which led to a new low. So these points will be our external liquidity, meaning that if either this high or this low is breached, we've now formed a new impulse leg in structure. The gray area in the background represents the start of Asia session. There was a strong bearish move right around 715. But where did this actually come from? There were several reasons for this move to actually happen. And this is how price builds up to make the true move. Before we get too far ahead, I want to explain three new terms when it comes to liquidity. We have the external or main liquidity. We also have what's called intermediate liquidity. And lastly, we have short term liquidity. While our dots we drawn before represent our external or main liquidity, the red lines are representing intermediate liquidity. The market formed intermediate highs, as we can see here, a take profit event, and then expanded through them to actually run liquidity and work itself up to the order block to our left. Refining even more, these purple lines represent short term levels. In order to form a short term level, all it takes is a two candlestick pattern forming a rejection from a level. For example, bullish bears would represent a ceiling or a new buy side liquidity level and a bearish bullish rejection would represent a floor or new sell side liquidity. In order for price to work its way from this low, all the way up to fill in this imbalance and retest into our order block, the market has to engineer liquidity to work itself to the point of interest. As we started maintaining bullish order flow by running buy side liquidity, we can see that after this bearish news candle, we actually transitioned right back into seller's pressure or bearish order flow. We formed a new imbalance indicating that sellers are coming back into the market, as well as a candle showing a long wick or order consumption to the high side. Remember, as retail traders, we cannot cause a reaction like this. So this means that there were large amounts of funds entering the market from hedge funds, banks, institutions, etc., with larger capital reserves than retail traders. Now that we made this wick and broke past this short term low, our new intermediate focus goes up to this high and this low. And our overall external target is still the same low. So to make sure you're following, the reason we're now looking at this impulse is because we started a retracement or a take profit up to a point of interest to our left, which was this bearish order block that then had a strong impulse from it, which created an imbalance. We started running buy side liquidity, both intermediate and short term to work ourselves back up to this point of interest. And once we got there, we formed a strong rejection candle that created a new imbalance, broke a short term level to the downside, and also formed order consumption or a long wick to the top side. These factors are indicating to us that the market is ready to continue its bearish order flow to run the external liquidity. So our overall goal is to find an entry point on the lower time frame that correlates with the continuation to the run of liquidity. We're now on the one minute time frame, and what we're going to do is start from this low, understanding how price got from this low all the way up to this high. So first thing first, price created a new point of liquidity at this low. Price drives away and fills in imbalances to its left. After we fill in some of the imbalances, we get another impulse to the downside, which runs the liquidity of the low. So we grab sell side liquidity, 
And then from that point, we start consolidating. We end up forming a bullish bearish rejection here. And if we were to draw a line across after we run that short term high, the next two candles end up giving us an imbalance. So from this bearish candles high to this bullish candles low, we have a gap that needs to be filled in. This transition offered a scalp up to the point of interest to flow with the higher time frame direction. The first way to enter this price action would be for price to re-enter into the imbalance range. So if we look at the lowest price of this bullish candle, we can see it comes in at 1.09110. The next candle comes in at 1.09109, which means that this bullish candle's price point got beaten by a micro pip. This gives us the opportunity to enter the market on the closure of this bearish candle and actually take advantage of that bullish momentum. Stop loss will go under the lowest wick and ideally a pip under it. As you can see, the market ends up moving away, coming back to fill that imbalance and then giving a strong impulse away. The reason I prefer this type of entry method is because although the market did retrace about a pip or so into your stop loss range, you may not always get the perfect retest to the order block or the fill of the imbalance. Also, if we look to the right, we didn't actually get any rejection candles or a order block in this range that would have given us a better entry point. So for now, let's take that off the chart. And now let's focus on the liquidity building up in this range up to our point of interest. In red, we have our intermediate liquidity runs. As we can see here, this was the first one. After we clear this high, we maintain the buy side order flow by maintaining the previous low. Price traded into this order block and imbalance made a new higher low point which then drove us to a new run of buy side liquidity. Now, keep in mind when I'm talking about higher lows, lower highs with, within internal structure, we're not talking about actual trend. We're simply talking about the order flow the market is currently in. Now, from this point, we can actually see that we created multiple imbalances within these candlesticks. After price breaches the high, it has a take profit event down to the second imbalance that was printed. After that, we push up again to run buy side liquidity. Now from there, we actually come back and retest the previous low that was printed here. Now let's look at the lowest price, 1.09124. The next retest to that level is exactly the same, 1.09124. As price moves away, this means that we've now printed equal lows. Many traders are seeing this as a double bottom and anticipating a continuous run up to fill the rest of this imbalance and potentially make a new high. And in this case, right after we print those equal lows, the market fails to make a new high and instead comes right back down to run the liquidity. Now pay attention to what the market did before actually running liquidity. This wick is telling you that orders were being consumed at this level, meaning that a lot of people were jumping into buy trades here, anticipating the market continuing. And guess what the next candle does? The next candle opens and expands to the downside, runs the liquidity under the low of that candle, but once again, makes an equal low to the ones to its left. This is now forming what some would call a triple bottom, but to us, all it means is there's more liquidity trapped under this level. And after this bearish candle stabs through and grabs majority of it, we can see that the market rallies heavily. So now that the market cleared a key level of liquidity, where is it going to next? Well, if we look to our left, we can see we have a very strong breakout range. But if we look at the start of this move, we can see the last bullish candle before the rollover. That bullish candle is representing the base of an order block. And what we can do when there's large candles like this is actually use a fib to cut our range in half. And as we can see, by cutting it in half, it actually made it way more accurate. So price first reaches up to around the 50% range. We get the first retracement, but we do not break any short-term levels to our left. If we notice, we're still technically playing within an imbalance, which means that we would not want to sell into this. Selling into a buy side imbalance is not a good idea because we're anticipating somewhere within that imbalance, price will find some kind of support and then reverse back up. Instead, the ideal way to trade this would be to wait for a sell side imbalance to be created. So as we can see, price played around a little bit in this range and then finally creates equal lows once again, which gets ran with this wick point. And after we run that low, we get a spike up to the highs. Price ends up making equal highs now, and then we have a very strong move to the downside. This now gave us a run of a short-term low and transitioned us into bearish order flow. So ideally to enter this market, what we want to see is a break of a short-term level and a return into the imbalance that was created. 
Now, as we can see, the imbalance that we'd want to focus on is in this range here, but price just missed it by a micro pip or so. So either the trade could have been entered on the rejection candle close to that imbalance, of course, putting your stop loss above the highest wick in the area, or what we can do is wait for the market to actually retest into another sell side imbalance. In this case, the market gave us one, two, three, four, five, and six opportunities to actually participate in this market. And once again, with the stop loss only having to be three to four pips, this is still a viable position. Now, as we move on throughout price action, we have to consider what has formed to our left. We ran these equal lows, trap sellers going short in this order block, price impulses and never came back to it. We then went up to the order block that created this whole impulse down. So when we look in this area that actually created this impulse leg, we want to look for the order block and any imbalances that formed in this range. So what we're gonna do is highlight this bearish candle and draw it to our right. And then if we would like to as well, we can highlight the imbalance that was created above it. Both of these are going to be points of interest for us, understanding that the market is always going to try to price efficiently. So if it has an imbalance in price action, most likely price is going to drive back to that level to make it efficient, along with retesting an order block to mitigate the order's trap. And that's exactly what we can see in this range here. We get that order consumption wick that pops down, fills in the imbalance and retest the order block. Now, after we retest that level, we see that price actually starts breaking some short-term levels here. We work ourselves back up to a high, and if we look to the left, we can see that we're actually playing within this bearish order block. Now, if you remember what we talked about before, we do not want to take a buy position into an opposing imbalance, okay? So if you want to take a sell, you want to sell from a sell side imbalance. If you want to buy, you want to buy from a buy side imbalance. As price is moving up here, we would be taking a buy directly into a bearish order block, which means that this would not be a trade we would want to take. Instead, we'd be holding the sell positions and anticipating a run of liquidity. And as you can see here, after we get that fake out move to the upside to fill in the imbalance and retest this order block, we end up crashing down and running this low. So now we can actually look for a retest into a sell side imbalance to continue the short. So there were actually two imbalances the market could play off of here. And as you can see, we ended up returning into the top imbalance as well as retesting into this bearish order block. The most important thing when taking a trade from the imbalance is going to be seeing if the candle body actually maintains the imbalance or breaks through it. As we can see here in this case, although we wick through the imbalance to retest into this order block, we close both candle bodies under that level and continue pushing to the downside. While this first imbalance had gotten a candle body closed above it, which would mean we wouldn't want to use this one as our entry point. After we retest into this imbalance range, we get another sell side movement that actually breaks through our previous order block here. And where does it go to next? It goes right to the next objective in price, which would be either an imbalance or an order block. And as we can see, we had both in this range. We had the order block based off of this bearish candle going down and the impulse going up. We also had the imbalance price taps into that range perfectly and then starts another take profit event. So what I want you to understand from this walkthrough we're going through is how price is actually seeking liquidity and then running to a target based off of the same exact thing. So just as a quick recap, Remember that this whole time we were running buy side liquidity, we worked ourselves back up to the point of interest, which was around the 50% of this bearish order block. From that point, we waited until we printed a sell side imbalance. Price then crashes to the sell side, filling in the imbalance, retesting a bullish order block. But since we're in heavy bearish order flow on the higher time frame, price is now maintaining the bearish order flow, breaking through those bullish order blocks. But if you notice, every time we hit a previous bullish order block, we then start a take profit event, which means the best place for you to take partials as you're selling this market would be as we fill in the algorithm to our left. So as we fill in the imbalance, as we retest these order blocks, those are the ideal places to take partials on your trade. So from that last tap into the order block, we get a very strong expansion. Now keep in mind, majority of people will chase this market, thinking that the market's about to go bullish, make new highs, etc. But we keep thinking about imbalances. To our left, we see sell side imbalances, which means we do not want to buy as we're entering these ranges. 
that's going to be dangerous and cause a strong rejection in the opposite direction. As we can see, this small imbalance was the one that actually got maintained. And then we see a very strong movement in the opposite direction. Where does price go back to? The bullish bearish bullish pattern or the bullish order block that caused this impulse to happen. Now, before we move on, I want you guys to think about what else needed to be achieved, even though we shot up to this wick high here, what else needed to be achieved in that structure leg before continuing? We had another imbalance up here that also printed equal highs. OK, so we had a bearish order block imbalance and equal highs that was left, although we did come back and retest this imbalance. We also printed equal highs in this range as well. So this is how liquidity is engineered as the market is moving. And we have to make sure that we're paying good enough attention to catch these price action movements in the market. This could also represent a trend line as well with the third tap being on the run of this liquidity. And of course, after the market clears out all the liquidity on both sides of the market. So anyone who was buying this market impulsively as it was moving up, got taken out by the spike down. We then print equal lows, which is new intermediate liquidity for us to the downside. We move up. We take out the previous highs that were created in this range, fill in the imbalance that was left. So now we're moving efficiently and the market crashes. And this cycle, of course, continues on and on and on again all the way down until we run the external liquidity. Now, the main price action I actually wanted to go over was November 22nd. So let's actually dive into this on the 15 minute time frame, and then we'll work ourselves back down to the one minute. So what we'll do is go ahead and clear the chart out here. Now, as we move into the next day, as you can see with this period separator, what we want to do is find the points of liquidity in the previous day. First, we add back our external sell side liquidity, which already had gotten ran. And to the upside, we're going to highlight this bearish order block, which caused the run of the short term low that transitioned us back into bearish order flow that then delivered us to a run of external liquidity. So once again, the importance of this level is that it actually delivered price through external sell side liquidity. Now, as we can see, after we ran this low, London session kicks in and starts to take profit event back up into our level of supply, running all of these short term and intermediate highs. We then get another strong impulse away creating another run of external sell side liquidity, then starting another take profit event right back up to our order block, and then another continuation even lower during New York session. This is why it's so important to understand session based trading. Asia, London and New York all took part in the same move from this bearish order block. So let's go to a lower time frame and dive into this price action. Now, before I draw out the key levels of liquidity, I want you to just look for them yourself. These levels I've drawn are the main levels of intermediate liquidity. As we can see, after we ran external sell side liquidity, we actually ran a short term high, created an imbalance, which was traded back into and then the buy side movement occurred. So once again, if you're looking to go long on this market, you could simply enter in this imbalance with your stop loss under that low, understanding that you're OK with the market retracing, you're anticipating this lowest wick to be the lowest low before the impulse happens. And as you can see, price impulses all the way back up to our bearish order block based on the 15 minute. Now to reach up to that point, we had several different price action movements. So let's walk through these levels. Number one, we had the bullish order block that created this first run of short term highs. Looking to the left, keeping in mind, we do not want to buy it directly into a sell side imbalance. We want to wait for that take profit to happen right back to our order block level. Now, one thing I do want to clear up is that since this imbalance was created pretty high in the range, yes, we can still take the buy because our stop loss still fits safely under this low. Now, let's say that this was expanded and it was like 10 pips to get under this previous low. We would then not look to take that buy position. Now, this price action retraced pretty hard, and I want you to think about why. If we look to the left, we can see that this would have been buying directly into a sell side imbalance as well as a bearish order block, which once again does not matter in the grand scheme of things. But if you want a more ideal entry, you could simply wait for the take profit event to occur and then catch on to the expansion. One thing you do want to keep in mind is that once again, we did not form any wakes to the bottom side or even an engulfing. 
By the time the market expanded and closed an order block, price would have been sitting at 1.08987. The entry here would have been at 1.08993, which means that there was only a pip of difference between these entries, which isn't a big deal. So nonetheless, we end up running buy side liquidity and forming a new imbalance. And if we were to draw this over to our left, we can see why exactly we maintained this imbalance instead of going lower. We turned a previous bearish order block into a level of demand for ourselves. And from that rejection of the imbalance in the previous bearish order block, we now formed a new bullish order block here that we can refine our zone to. Now, as we can see, we get a retest and another order block printed. One thing I want to make clear is the fact that since this was the original order block, this is the level of demand you'd want to focus on versus any new order blocks formed in this range. So as you're watching this price action form, you should not be scared by these short term levels being ran. You want to focus on the price point of this order block, which was the first one to be printed and actually fill in the algorithm. Now, as we look at this point, we can see that the market started to print lower highs, which some would see as trend line taps to go short. Others would perceive these lows being printed as double bottoms. And as we can see, the market taps right under these wicks, clears out all the liquidity from under them. And then we once again have that strong impulse. We run buy side liquidity and we form a continuation order block, which is bullish, bearish, bullish. So the same thing we did here, turning this bearish order block into a bullish one, we also did here. And the market continues once again, and the same exact thing happens. We turn a bearish order block into a bullish order block. Price retests into it and expands once again. One more thing I want to point out is price action is moving up here. If you are anticipating where to get out of the market, we're always trying to look to the left. We know that the liquidity is above the high, but we can also potentially see the market want to reject off of an order block or an imbalance fill. So as we push up into this level, what we can also start considering is where the actual intermediate lows are sitting. So for an example, this bearish candle led up to this high here. This was the lowest low within this impulse here, which means that unless that's broken, I'm still anticipating more buy side movement, which we get. And we can do the same thing with this next impulse high here. Until we actually break the low up to that high, this is still all bullish order flow. So this little pullback is just simply impulsing price up to a new high. So now that we've actually reached into the bearish order block to our left, now what we're looking for is a transition. We want to see the break of a short-term low as well as an imbalance being created. We get the run of the short-term low here and we get the imbalance in this range. This is an ideal setup in the market. Whether you take the trade off the top of the imbalance or on the closure of that bearish order block, we're simply able to place our stop loss above the high now and catch the drop all the way down to external sell side liquidity and through it. So do you understand how the market had to engineer all of this liquidity to be built up just for the market to clear it all out? And the market did not reverse from somewhere random, it reversed from that M15 bearish order block that was created during our Asian open window. Price then puts in a new high within London session in our three hour window, crashes down, to a new low. And this brings us into New York session. Keeping the same logic, after we run external sell side liquidity, we understand that it's logical for a take profit event to start. So now what we're looking for is a run of short term highs and the creation of an imbalance. And we could see both of those happening here. We ran past two short term highs and created an imbalance in this range. We retested into the imbalance with this wick and expanded, closing with a bullish engulfing. This would now be a buy trade, taking it right back up to the level of supply that created this impulse down. Now let's actually look at how price is forming here. As we push up, we had multiple imbalances being printed. So in this case, what we can do is use from this low to this high to find where equilibrium is actually at within this impulse leg. As we can see, the market comes right back down to equilibrium within this imbalance, gives us a bullish order block print, and then takes off to a new high. And of course, we printed new engineered liquidity which are equal highs. And we can see once again, the market's goal was to work itself up to fill in the algorithm of price so that it can move efficiently, meaning that it went back up to the highest imbalance in this impulse leg down. So we skipped past all of the lower imbalances, all the lower order blocks, and went right back up to what the market needed to achieve 
to make this impulse move efficiently. Now, after we tapped into that imbalance, we started that take profit back to the sell side. And the same logic applies. What do we need to achieve in this previous leg of structure? Now we have an order block here, but it's been retested. We then have an imbalance here. Then we have another order block with an imbalance as well. So as we can see, price comes back and taps the imbalance. Now in this case, we did not go all the way into it, but we did get very close, which means that this imbalance is technically still active. Now from that point, we start to get some more buy side movement. And once again, if you're looking for some kind of entry to scalp it right back up to the order block here, wait for the short term high break and that creation of an imbalance, which we have here. Once again, the market perfectly retests into it and gives you the optimal entry to take the long. And as we can see, the market takes us right back up to that high. Of course, not before creating a whole bunch of engineered liquidity to set up the move during New York session. As we can see here, we have tons of equal lows building up. And when the market is this clean, 99% of the time, this will be a huge target based on how many orders are sitting under this level. We also have to think about the sellers who saw this as a bearish trend line, who were going short anticipating the market to roll over. They all got stopped out as we impulse to a new high here. This is why it's very important to understand the higher time frame objective versus just using the lower time frames. We know that the M15 has not retested back into the bearish order block yet which means that all of this price action movement is building up to reach to that point of interest before doing anything else. Keeping in mind that we're still not looking for that transition yet because we have not tapped into our point of interest. You can see that price came back around equilibrium, played around a couple times, building more liquidity with this trend line area. We impulse to a new high running buy side liquidity so that we also stop out anyone who went short within this range. We have another take profit back to a order block and also fill in the imbalance and we finally reach the actual point of interest. It just so happens that after we form the left head right shoulder, the news hits at 7.30. What you'll realize is this is not a coincidence. This is all part of the algorithm and is extremely accurate. So now as we zoom out on this chart and see how price played out during New York session, I want you to pause it and think about how many levels of liquidity were formed and how many levels were taken out as this impulse happened. Now, hopefully you're able to spot these two highs as equal highs. And as we can see, they got targeted in the future as we ran through this level. Now, as we can see, the level got ran three times here, formed new equal highs, take profit, and then ran through once again. So I want you guys to also think about the premise that stop losses are sitting right above this level, but not everyone has them right above this level. It could be above it by a few pips as well, which is why this run of liquidity up to that order block would stop out all of the liquidity above that range. Now, understanding the trend line liquidity that formed here, we can see exactly why the market moved the way it did for the news release. So first we ran out buy side, we then ran out sell side by clearing all the liquidity under this trend line and also filling in the algorithm here, retesting the order block and imbalance. From that point, we start a take profit event back into a sell side imbalance, which gives you an opportunity to sell the market. From that point, we form a new intermediate low of sell side liquidity, meaning that as we push up here, we're still anticipating the run of this low. Now, as we can see, the market actually pulled back one more time forming equal lows, which is giving us even more sell side liquidity that we are anticipating the market will need to run. And we smash directly through it here. We have a small take profit event and another impulse. From that point, price forms a bearish order block that we retest into and continues that sell side pressure. Now, I want you to ask yourself, when you look at all of these impulses and take profits, what was the market driving towards? Remember that nothing in the market is random. The market reversed on a dime because of what's to its left. There was an order block here that caused a strong impulse. When price comes back to that level, it caused the take profit back up to a level of supply. Here is an external sell side liquidity low that can also double as equal lows. Once we clear that level, the market has a take profit event and price is now building up what looks like a transition. Keeping in mind what we talked about earlier, price drives directly into a huge sell side imbalance. So after the market clears the liquidity above this high and all these intermediate highs that were formed, we then impulse to a new low. Now I know this was a pretty long lesson. I wanted to make sure I broke it down in a way that was easy to understand, but now it's your turn. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description to take the quiz for this lesson.
In order to access the free interactive quiz, you need to register for a free account. To create an account, click on register. And don't forget, if you get 100%, you'll automatically be entered in this week's giveaway.